YouTube, it's your boy the Chocolate Bay. You guys, a quick video as you guys what already know. Okay, I'm gonna give a breakdown. You guys, you know, I get straight to the point regarding the Wendy Williams movie, oof, and her documentary after. Okay, the movie depicts Wendy's struggles from childhood on down to adulthood, on down to now regarding her divorce with her um, ex husband Kelvin, and her relationship with her son and family members, and so on and so on. What I liked about this movie, I'll say um, I commend Wendy for being a pioneer. I think she, you know, she led the way or broke the wave or did a lot of things regarding bloggers, regarding celebrity gossip. She's done a lot. Nonetheless, I don't think this movie in totality and actuality depicted her entire life. Um, what I would say, starting from the beginning at um, childhood, it's sad that a lot of memories, you guys, that we and things we experience as chi uh, children, they stay with us. They might evolve in us being, um, I would say, promiscuous, us not being able to have, uh, you know, healthy uh, relationships or marriage to our adulthood. But as a small child, Wendy was it was her and she had another sister. Her sister was always the gold, chi the golden child that did well, you know, and stuff like that. The brother, he was the only boy. And then it was Wendy. She was like an awkward child. She was um, overweight. She was just big for her age. And I think that played a big part in who she was and her self-esteem. Um, Wendy showed pictures. I thought she looked normal. Just a, you know, a cute, chubby little kid. But even from when she was younger, her parents sent her to, um, she went to, quote unquote, like a fat camp for overweight children. Um, her mom put her on a diet with, I think, tuna and mustard. And from that that uh, trajectory, it showed exactly who Wendy Williams was going to be and how things in her life would affect her regarding her uh, her childhood. I mean, a child being put on a diet, I mean, we know little chunky, cute kids, but my thing is, it's ways that adults could do things regarding trying to scrutinize a child. You know, your self-esteem is, you know, you know, getting up there, you're trying to, you know, build confidence, trying to decide exactly who you are. But her parents putting a child on a diet... I mean, stuff like that is bad for your emotions, it's bad for your self-esteem, and many children, when they're dealt with in that way, you guys, they start uh, in um, developing uh, eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia from childhood. Um, their parents basically telling them they might perceive it as not being good enough. And I saw a young child, I think she said the earliest at maybe six or seven, and she was placed on a diet. And I hate to bring up... Uh, her parents, her late mom, God rest her soul, she passed away recently, but I think her parents, how we're reared, how we are brought up, our parents, our environment, it has a lot to do with who we are. Um, Wendy Williams' mom reminds me of my grandmother, God rest her soul, my grandma passed recently, last year, but she was very uh, relatable to Wendy Williams' mothers. They were the same complexion. My grandmother, you know, she's from those days where adults were adults. You carried on a certain way. You carry yourself a certain way. You didn't tell family business. Um, you had to have a certain look. Uh, don't embarrass the family, that type of thing. And even watching Wendy Williams' mom and her dad when they came to the show, I still felt like Wendy Williams took what they brought her up with regarding, look, you have to be a certain way, Wendy. You have to look a certain way. You have to carry yourself a certain way. You don't, you know, tell family business. You don't tell what goes on in this house. And I think Wendy took that with her um, from a young age with, you know, trying to bring up, you know, trying to get that self-esteem in there, um, that identity, that you were not good enough. She was awkward. She was, you know, heavy. And a chunky kid, uh, she could have took that as not being good enough. Like she wanted to show them, her family, look, mom, dad, I could do this. But putting a child you know, on a diet that young, like it, it, it says a lot to that child uh, regarding even their self-esteem. Not to mention she grew up in an environment or a neighborhood that was, you know, it was primarily Caucasian or white. So she didn't fit in either way. And then they showed parts of it, like she was at a party, they were playing musical chairs and she beat the girl to the chair and the chair broke. And you know, so I think self-esteem, self-worth played a big part. She learned, I, I feel like, at a young age that her self-worth was low, that she didn't measure up to what her family or her parents wanted. She was a chunky, cute kid. They wanted a smaller, slim person due to uh, the mom, the father, and their environment. And Wendy didn't quite fit that type of dynamic of what that look was. 
So it it was just it was just like a wild moment to. I mean, shoot, I struggled with my weight, and I've been struggling with it for a while. But my parents were never that direct as a, you know, when I was a child trying to, you know, get um, trying to bring me up regarding self esteem and looks and stuff, and you know, self worth, and put me on a diet so young, like. I mean, it says a lot regarding her rearing it, even when her parents would come to her show, like I mentioned prior, it seems like they were just okay with that. That was their norm, you know? And in certain, uh, you know, communities, I mean, looks mean everything. And Wendy just, I felt like didn't, she, she, she didn't feel like she felt the part with how she should look aesthetic-wise. So that was just traumatizing. I'm like, wow. But also, and also the way, even with, um, I'll say you guys, even with, Baby, Wendy was on drugs. She had been very forthcoming. She's been very honest regarding her being addicted to cocaine. But it's like she sort of used it because it curved her appetite as well, cocaine. It curved her appetite. She could remain slim. Um, she also worked uh, predominantly nights when she first started, you know, getting in there regarding school and stuff. So, I mean, it helped her a lot. But it says a lot with how she was reared as a child and it overflowed into, you guys, her adulthood with how she was, her mannerisms, her behavior regarding healthy, what was healthy, images, everything. So I would take a illegal substance, you know, it would keep me up at night as well as curb my appetite. But it was just very sad. Even at the beginning of the, uh, the movie, it depicted Wendy being physically assaulted. And... It, it was it, like it was just mind boggling. Like she's talked about it prior, but when you actually watch a movie and you actually see this person that you see on TV so often go through something like that, it's sort of I don't know. It just sends signals to you, like to watch many women and girls go through this. But it's just different when you could hear a story, but when you see it uh, physically on TV, it just it changes your mind regarding that person, um, things that they had to endure, uh, being appreciative of our black women, women period, with things that they go through with being sexually victimized um, at a young age. And it was just very sad. And at those times, women didn't tell. You sort of dealt with it privately. Um, Wendy, she, I think it was around the AIDS or you know HIV epidemic. She went and got tested. She was negative, thank goodness. But I mean, this is a signal exactly what our young girls and women go through regarding sexual violence toward women, which I do not agree about completely. So that happened as well. And I would say through the movie, it was entertaining. Um, it. I wish, I would say this, y'all, to be completely honest, that Wendy Williams could have talked more regarding her life. Even on her show, she talks about things that she had experienced. Even if you go back and listen to past radio interviews, she talks about other things. I feel like this movie should have been like a docuseries regarding her life. Maybe like the Michael Jackson movie, y'all. The Jackson 5, baby, that was about, what, 30 hours long? <laughs> but I think Wendy Williams, she deserved the the same as well because she has a lot to unfold and unpack um this woman has been through a lot in which many of us have but i feel like she wasn't candid in talking about her struggles um with her family as well as relationships it's been rumored that uh she according to her she had a one-night stand with method man um she had she dated or slept with uh biggie smiles a rapper uh, several members of Wu-Tang Clan, uh, Eric B., she dated, in which she portrayed in the movie, he charged up, a, well, she rented him a car, he messed up her credit. Um, according to her, she had an abortion um, of a child that she was pregnant by him. You know, well, I'm born fetus, she was pregnant by him. But, I mean, it's a lot, I feel like, with Wendy and her life uh, to unpack in this little, small little movie. Um, even with the whole... Uh, Whitney Houston incident like a lot of this was a slither I feel of Wendy Williams actual life she's been through a lot not to mention her husband Kevin Hunter y'all this man was rumored to have been physically abusive in which I agree and verbally you could just tell by his demeanor um, people were afraid of Kevin um, he was banned from um, her um, radio gig like the station he, he could come there anymore I know with Charlemagne it was rumored that he saw Kevin physically put his hands on Wendy. And what gets me, people saw this and they did nothing. And, I mean, this man has been volatile. His behavior is nasty and disgusting. 
And even watching the documentary that she did after the movie, Wendy was almost like defending Kevin. Um, I could see that she has this this thought of men, like, oh, men are the best, men are great, even though this man has victimized her. Victimized her. Even in a documentary, she's talking about him like all he did was cheat and have a baby on her. And, I mean, it's been alleged. I mean, it's stories out there that this man was physically abusive. And I just feel like with Wendy, it's that facade of trying to look a certain way, trying to appear um, happy when, when you're not. I was reading an article this morning. Wendy had been married to Kelvin or Kevin. His real name is Kelvin with the L, but he didn't like it, so he likes to go by Kevin. Hunter. And uh, in the article I was reading, and they asked her, like, when did you realize uh, the marriage was compromised. She said the second year. Y'all, they were married 21 years. So you knew that he wasn't ish the second year of marriage and you still continue. And I think with Wendy, it was image. Um, she wanted to prove people wrong by saying, you know, by being like, look, I could have a successful marriage. Um, I have a man that loves me and I could do it. And also I felt like with Kevin, she felt protected. He was like almost her knight in shining armor. Um, she grew up in a certain environment where, you know, it was grimy, it was nasty. She had dealt with a lot of nasty, grimy, no good men. And she felt this, and she came in contact with this guy that was charismatic, that quote unquote, like protected her. It was that for her. And I feel like they bonded. It's almost like a codependency with him and her. Like, I feel like it's a lot of just unhealthy um, mental, it's an unhealthy mental relationship regarding them. Um, th this man is vicious vicious he's a he's very aggressive um even i think in her book i know as well as the movie he bought her a rolex watch and she um talked about during her hot topics her and her people get together you know talk about gossip and he was like 20 minutes and she was like look we got the star the show you know we got to get this going he came in now he threw down a watch so hard y'all it cracked the whole table cracked and he threw the chair over. You mean to tell me this man had all this pent up aggression? And according to Wendy, he's never abused her. I don't believe that. It's been stories that this man is physically and verbally abusive to her. Charlemagne even mentioned that he has witnessed him hit Wendy. You know, and it's just sad. I just feel like it's for appearances. I mean, it was a good movie. Nonetheless, I felt like it didn't depict a lot of stuff regarding Wendy, her relationship with her husband, with men. Um, it even made me go back to say, what type of relationship did you and your parents have? Did you, uh, was your dad abusive? Uh, were your, uh, was your brother abusive? And I understand self-esteem and stuff, but for you to stay in such a volatile, nasty, hateful relationship for so long, this man, according to her as well, he cheated repeatedly. Repeatedly. And I know he had a baby with his then-mistress, Shireen, but who's to say, y'all? I think it's probably other children out there. Uh, according to Wendy, this man liked to have unprotected sex. And she got tested and she's uh, quote unquote clean. I hate to use that word, but she doesn't have any SCIs, any STDs. But who's to say that he didn't do other things with other people as well? I just don't believe that. It could be other children out there. This could have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But I don't believe Kevin, Kelvin Hunter or Kevin is so innocent. I think it's a lot of dirt out there, but I just don't. Get with Wendy talking about your past things that happened could be very cathartic. It could be very therapeutic, and not to mention her son. The son was living in such a volatile, hateful environment. Who like this young boy had to see his mom being hit, beaten. He had to witness something, and I know Wendy. She's trying to protect someone, or even when uh, the documentary, she's like, "No, I'm not a victim. I don't want to be a victim." But potentially you are in love. Like, th this man is violent. Like, we've heard stories. We've seen stuff. We know that he's physically abusive and just try to almost protect this man that has done you so nasty and hateful. I mean, I hope she would think about the repercussion it, it does on her son. Uh, will he grow up beating on his woman or man? Or will he get into a certain lifestyle where he doesn't value his partner or his spouse? I mean... It's a lot. I mean, you try to protect people, but that's what get me with our community. We don't talk about things that hurt us, things that we've been through. I mean, this woman, this man was not the nicest guy. I mean, people feared him. They talked about him tremendously with things that he's done to people. Um, even with her show, he made it to where no one could get close to Wendy but him. They had to go through Calvin Hunter to get to Wendy. 
And even on her show, they said that, they, you know, they would do rehearsals for certain stuff. He would come up and grab her by her shoulder, yank her up several times whenever he was ready. And you may tell me she's saying that this man wasn't violent, really? I mean, even during a docuseries, a documentary, um, her staff wanted to say more, but I felt like they just didn't go in. Um, even Suzanne said something. Her, Suzanne's husband was on that, too. He's a producer as well. And to me, he wanted to say stuff but he sort of didn't he just sort of held. he said you know important information but he sort of held in but i just feel for wendy this type of image of being happy being just um you know upbeat but you have a man that's not worth a crap um that's potentially or allegedly physically hurting you you dislocated or broke your sh what shoulder what a year or two ago i mean it, it it's just a lot to unwrap in this story and I mean, I think she's done a good job with, you know, branding. But I was talking to a friend, Mocha, and um, on her um, live today, and I came up with the question: What what justifies being successful? What would you do for happiness? Um, I think in the black community, many people see happiness or being successful as money, status, class. They don't see it as having a peace of mind. They don't see it as raising four or five children. You might be working a, uh, uh, two jobs, but you put your four children through college, through high school, private or whatever, but you make sure that they graduate, they're uh, well-rounded, they're educated. That could be deemed as success, but in our community and a lot of young people, they deem success as physical, uh, uh, money, uh, having status, class, and even listening to many people's uh, 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 interviews regarding Wendy or renditions, I'm just like, people will say, well, yeah, but she's done well. She's number one on daytime. Yeah, but this woman is suffering. We saw the documentary after the movie. This woman has a lot of mental things that are going on. Um, she's now alone. Um, she's been with this man for 21 years that disrespected her tremendously. He handled everything. And it's just crazy to where Wendy was so powerful. She was so together, just bubbly, charming. And behind the scenes your life is just crumbling this man is controlling every aspect of your life every aspect every aspect contracts uh your management people around you um how you conduct yourself what you do and even through the documentary the second part wendy just talked about him like he was this it's, it's almost well it, it's a codependency it, it was it appeared to be very unhealthy like she almost looked up to him calvin hunter like when she mentioned she passed out after he got Shireen pregnant and that whole thing, she was like, he was upstairs and how he came to rescue her when she passed out. And I'm just like, this man has done a lot of nasty-ish to you. You know, like a lot of nasty-ish. And I just, it's sad in our community, people are victimized. People are raped, they're molested, and people don't say anything. They don't come out with their story. It's like a thing where people of color, black people, want you to just, you know, it's within the family. No, you should be able to verbalize, get that frustration and anger out, own what happened to you. You know, it it's power and privilege when you could state what happened, even though people might not believe you, but somebody heard you. You're able to just talk and speak and just do this. I didn't quite. I mean, it was it's inspiring to a fault. Nonetheless, I felt like it wasn't completely who Wendy Williams is quote unquote was or what happened in her life a lot more happened and I'm like if I'm doing a movie like this I want to be able to depict everything that happened in my life everything I mean to keep things a certain look for appearances because the, the only thing she appeared that he did wrong was she didn't get a woman pregnant but through sources credible sources people close to her this man is not this nice you know truth truthful trustworthy person I mean, he's been cheating on you since you guys got together. So, I mean, I don't know. I think I'm proud for Wendy. I think she did a marvelous job. But I don't know. When you see people going through certain stuff, it makes you think differently regarding who they are and what they will and won't allow in their life and what type of person they are, what type of upbringing to allow such a beast just do this to you and just, I don't know. Wendy kept saying, I remember during the documentary, the second part, I'm all alone. No, Wendy. I feel like at sometimes she wanted people to give her that answer because she mentioned people just say, leave my mom, my dad, my sister. Well, Wendy, sometimes that's the best option to do is just leave. It's just leave for peace of mind. 
for who you are, your heart, your soul, your spirit. And you stay, I feel like, so long to keep up appearances. And it hurt me to fit for her to feel like she's alone, but you're not alone. You're not. It's several people, a, a lot of people that are going through similar circumstances. But I don't know. It just made me think differently of her. I'm proud of her. I think she's paid the way for a lot of people. Nonetheless, Wendy has a lot of skeletons in the closet. I don't think she was completely truthful with who she was or what happened to her in her life. But comment below, y'all. Peace.